Sushi may be the world's most well-known Japanese food, but there are many styles of sushi, some not known outside of Japan. This style called Saiku Sushi is decorative, challenging the creativity of master chefs like this one, who is only limited by his own imagination. This is the Tokyo Decorative Psycho Sushi Story. Only in Japan. The great sushi chefs have mastered the craft of touch and taste, which can inspire the person eating it. Preparing a simple nigiri sushi is more complicated than most customers think. But sometimes chefs wander beyond the realms of the known into the psycho sushi world. There is no limit except perhaps the seasonality of the ingredients. This is tsubaki, or Japanese camellia made of maguro. It seems more art than food, but make no mistake, this is all food. It's psycho sushi at Takasago Sushi Restaurant in Tokyo. で、僕は幅広くアメリカのお寿司も取り入れ、昔ながらのお寿司も取り入れ、その中で喜んでもらうっていう形ですね。で、もちろん普通のお寿司もこだわって作ってます。もちろん小和田の締め方からどこのお
It's very similar to a normal sized counterpart, just much, much smaller. It's not meant to be eaten nor on the menu, just something fun and different for his best customers and their kids. But where does this unique creativity come from? Not many Tokyo sushi chefs make California rolls or non traditional styles. This one looks so good. It it just has a different color to it. The salmon and the ikura. The color of the sushi is very important. And when you get a tray of nigiri sushi, you'll, you'll see different colors to it. The ika, the salmon, the maguro. It all has a variation, which I think gives it its own appeal. It's all of the senses coming together. It's salmon. <laughs> it's salmon, but it's really, it's really good salmon. And again, the way that they've, it's been cut, usually salmon is one piece on top of a bed of rice. This has not been cut into different pieces, and again, coming together, coming apart, and then coming together. やっぱり難しいんですよ。お寿司をしっかり出すことがやっぱ大前提って最初のすごい綺麗です。綺麗ですね。ラッピング、キューカンバーアンドエッグインデア、デレベルオブディテイルインディス。イズジャストアメイジング。アイフィールナットウォーディ
um, basically I'm eating the chef's experience. Ah, yeah, yeah. So, the main is, 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 the main the main is, 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 the main this one I'm really curious about. This is carp. Or, uh, koi. Goldfish. Yeah. <laughs> I love the details of it. It Kantan Janai to, to cut the tentacles of the octopus to make the eyes, it's a perfect round shape of it. But this looks almost too pretty to eat. But the ika is very translucent. You can see inside of it, which gives it uh, another way to see the colors and the presentation. It's interesting that you can take the ingredients and with your imaginations, find new ways to, to use that in a presentation like this. I'm gonna eat this one with chopsticks. Inside is some yellow tamagoyaki or egg, dark green seaweed and red maguro. This one looks extremely interesting. It's made of uh, magoro or tuna. The red color with the rice underneath it is just so unique. And the way it's just covering it. I love this. I'm gonna have to use chopsticks with this one. This chrysanthemum is made of a long rope cut of magoro draped with skill over the rice, quite popular in Kyoto back in the day. Oh, I love Akami. <laughs> Chutoro Otoro is really good, but there's something special about Akami. I know when, you, when you're eating Otoro and, and Chutoro, which are the fattier cuts of Maguro, a lot of people see more expensive being better. Actually, it's just a different taste. Uh, Akami, there's just more of it inside of the tuna, which is why it might be a little bit cheaper. Otoro, there's just less of it. It doesn't make it better or worse. It's just rarer. Um, but that akami, the way it's cut and the way it breaks apart in your mouth, like the other ones, is just really unique. Yeah. Each chef brings his or her own experience to the restaurant. That's one of the values, what a customer pays for. Since coming to Japan, I have a new appreciation for food, ingredients, and the dedication so many chefs have to perfecting their craft. You won't find Saiku Sushi on the menu here. It's historical and something Yuki-san does for fun, and I appreciate him sharing his skill with us. Sushi is fun, especially Kaiten conveyor belt sushi, but there's something special about having a chef make it in front of you, giving guidance and learning more about it. Sushi is very competitive in Tokyo. You need to be consistently perfect to satisfy customers, but that X factor is creativity and friendliness. It's a reason why you always go back to your favorite sushi shop and a reason why I'll go back to see Yuki-san and Takasago Sushi. If you like this sushi adventure, leave me a comment below and subscribe to Only in Japan, where I'll take you on another adventure to the far corners of Japan with a story you'll never forget. Mata ne.